if they have already forgiven in an absolute way, they should have a perfect body. That is the problem of, uh, that is the problem they have made by uh, altering the way the Bible on this particular verse, Romans chapter 6 verse 7. So, with regards to those who have survived and uh, resurrected, they are not yet perfect. They are not yet perfect in the sight of God. In fact, they are not yet alive in a symbolical way in the sight of God. That is the teaching of the Jehovah's Witness regarding uh, the situation of the resurrected, resurrected ones inside the millennium and those who have survived the Armageddon. So they will just, uh, they will become uh, alive and the viewpoint of God if they have already attained, attained the perfection, human perfection at the end of the millennium. But is that true when it comes to the Bible? Well, for that, I want to, we want to read the words of the Lord at Luke chapter 20 verse 37 with regards to those who will be resurrected faithful ones of God Luke chapter 20 verse 37 it says there but that the dead are raised up even Moses made known an account in the account about the turn bus when he calls Jehovah the God of Abraham and God of Isaac and God of Jacob he is a God not of the dead but of the living for they are all living to him so according to the Jesus Christ the faithful ones of God dead or alive now they are living in the viewpoint they are alive very much alive in the viewpoint of God but the doctrine of the Jehovah's Witnesses is contradicting this clear words of Jesus by saying that those who will survive Armageddon and those who will be resurrected inside the millennium will only came alive after they have attained human perfection and thus they are using Revelation chapter 20 verse 5 to support that and what is <laughs> Revelation chapter 20 verse 5 saying that the rest of the dead did not came to life until the thousand year has ended. And that is their uh, explanation for uh, that particular verse. Revelation chapter 20 verse 5. For them, it is not a literal revelation, uh, uh, resurrection. But uh, if we will uh, consider the context the context, my dear viewers, is the verses surrounding the part a, a particular verse in the Bible. The, the immediate context is verse 4 and verse 6. And, and that two verses, which uh, were in verse 5, is in the middle of these verses. The verse 4 and verse 6 is... Uh, discussing or talking about literal li literal resurrection and the theology of Jehovah's Witnesses is uh, uh, is uh, admitting that that verse 4 and verse 6 talks about a literal resurrection but then in the middle of that verses they are saying that the resurrection in verse 5 is a symbolic symbolic resurrection wow <laughs> how did they how did they came up with that kind of uh, explanation so they are applying verse 5 to the earthly class as they are saying those who will survive their Magadon and those who will berserk they will not come alive they are not dead in the viewpoint of God until they attain human perfection toward the end of the millennium. 
But as we have read already, Luke chapter 20 verse 37 and 38 clearly stated that anyone righteous and putting faith on the provisions and loving provision of God is already much aligned right now and the viewpoint of the Lord. So, here the teaching of the Jehovah's Witnesses is clearly contradicting the Bible. And one more thing, by saying that uh, they are attaining the human protection at the full length of the, the millennium reign of Christ, they are inevitably saying that the original sin or the Adamic sin was, was very much alive. But in their own theology, they are reversing the effect. <laughs> they are reversing the effect of the Adamic sin by saying that from the start of that uh, millennium until the end of that millennium, the the process is an a reverse way. Unlike now, because of the Adamic sin, the witnesses is saying that uh, we grow old and die. But there, in the millennium, they have reversed it. They have reversed it. And uh, we don't know where did they get that kind of uh, what Bible verse are they going to use to support that kind of explaining their theology. But uh, is it true that during the millennium reign of Christ, the Adamic sin, which is the precursor of old age and death, has already been invalidated or been terminated by God or put in, in a way in a restraining order? <laughs> Was already restrained? Uh, let us... Uh, let us read another uh, verse in the Bible which is uh, very enlightening regarding this uh, topic. Let's, uh, let us uh, follow me to turn your Bible on 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 26. It says, And the last enemy, death, is to be brought to nothing. So, here the Bible is very plain and very clear that death is the last enemy that will be brought to nothing. So, it will only mean that Satan is not the last enemy that will be destroyed by God or by Christ. It is death, the Adamic death, that is the precursor or the reason why people grow old and die. It is the Adamic death that will be the last, the last enemy to be brought to nothing by God. It is not Satan. But uh, in the Bible, by the way, in the Bible, it is very plain. The Bible is very plain on the path when Satan will be destroyed. If we will uh, read Revelation chapter 20 verses 7 to 10, Invite you once again, my dear viewers, to be patient with me for in uh, reading these verses. Caesar, now as soon as the 1,000 years have ended, Satan will be released from his prison and he will go out to mislead those nations in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, and to gather them together for the war. The number of those of these is, the sun, is as the sun of the sea, and they advance over the whole earth and encircle the camp of the holy ones. And the beloved city, but fire came down out of heaven and consumed them. And the devil who was misleading them was hard into the lake of fire, and so forth, where put the wild beast and the false prophet already were, and they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. So the Bible is very clear. It is very plain that Satan will be let, will be let loose after the 1,000 year 1,000 year period, the millennial reign of Christ. And 
after that, he will rebel again and mislead the people. But the witness is, is uh, using this particular or inserting in this particular verses from the verses that we have just read a while ago, the word final test. But if you will come back to those verses, there is no, there is no such a word, uh, words final test on that verses. He will mislead the nation. So, at verse 10, he was hurled into the lake of fire. Meaning, he has been annihilated already according to the teaching of the Jehovah's Witness. He, he was been executed already. Annihilated, distract, destroyed already. So, if the Adamic death will be the last enemy, we will have to picture in our mind that Adamic death is uh, during that time is still in effect. So, Adamic death survived Satan, Satan the devil. Yes, Adamic death survived Satan the devil because it is the last enemy. So, it will only mean, the implication is of that is in the full length of the millennial reign of Christ, Adamic death is very much aligned it's, and it's very much in effect. So, it, if it is existing during that period, the millennium, so, the natural, the natural implication of that is it will bring death to those who has under its authority. So, sin and Adamic death will claim its victim at the full length of the millennial of Christ. People are dying on that period because of sin and Adamic death. So, after Satan uh, has been already destroyed, where did we see that been removed? We can uh, read about that at the following verses. Now, Satan has already been destroyed. Let's uh, read verses chapter 11 to 14. Uh, Revelation chapter 10. He okay, saw so a great white throne and the one seated on it. From before him the earth and the heaven fled away. And no place was found for them. And I saw the dead, the great and the small, standing before the throne, and scrolls were opened, but another scroll was opened. It is the scroll of life. The dead were judged out of those things written in the scrolls, according to the dead. And the sea gave up the dead in it. And death and grave gave up the dead in them. And they were judged individually according to their deeds. And death and the grave were held into the lake. So, again, the Bible is very clear here that the Adamic death will only be destroyed after the destruction of Satan the devil. So, 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and 26 is very agreeable to Revelation chapter 20 verses 7 to 14. The sequence is very clear. So, death is ravishing its victim inside the millennial reign of Christ. But the Jehovah's Witnesses is considering the millennial as the paradise itself. So, with regards to the resurrection, the body of uh, those who will be resurrected, and with regards to the situation of those who have survived the Armageddon, it is clear for, from the verses that we have considered this morning that the truth of living forever and escaping death from this time on is impossible. It is not a Bible teaching. It is a false teaching, an empty promise from that religious organization. And if that, uh, and if that is a false teaching and an empty promise, uh, what damage will it cause a person if he will believe that and consume 
or expend all his life, all his time, his energy, resources, and all what he has for propagating that kind of that kind of false promises or empty promises, false teachings. Yes, it is detrimental to a good, happy, and healthy living because many person has already sacrificed their happiness right now or any potential, any time, or any resources they may have just to to attain to attain or to get that price which which in reality is an empty promise a false teaching so all their time the witnesses that they are uh, the money they are using right now the expenses they are doing and carrying because of being a witness going to distant uh, assembly convention places and giving their monies, donations to the Watchtower organization, supporting the function of that organization who is propagating lies and empty promises. It is a uh, very uh, very disturbing uh, thought. And uh, many have uh, even sacrificed their lives by following the teaching of the organization of refusing Bible uh, blood transfusion uh, when uh, they are uh, in uh, life or death situation. They have, uh, they have paid it with their lives. So that is uh, why I was doing all my videos. I was uh, making an exposition regarding the false teaching and why the Jehovah's Witnesses in, is in a very disadvantageous uh, situation right now because of these uh, false promises and false teachings. So, once again, uh, I want to thank my, to thank my uh, avid uh, viewers, followers and supporters, my subscribers, in my channel and uh, if you are a new viewer of my video please subscribe and uh, please uh, share my videos to as many people as you can so that uh, this uh, exposition will reach them and uh, will serve as a warning for them not to engage and uh, or have to do with uh, in any way with that uh, organization. Thank you and may our God bless us all.